If we'd got live dinosaurs, we could time them like I've just timed this race. Uh, the distance was a mile. The winner did it in 105 seconds. That's about 34 miles an hour. Now, we can't do it that way with dinosaurs, but maybe there's another way. Dinosaurs did leave behind one piece of solid evidence about their rate of speed, their footprints. This is one of the largest sets of dinosaur tracks ever found. They're preserved in a riverbed in Glen Rose, Texas. But how do you get from the tracks to an estimate of speed? Here they come, Meg. That's fine. Gordon, that's great. Alexander timed the speeds of different animals and then measure the stride length, the distance between footprints, of each animal. That's three meters, 30, 10 feet, 10 inches. Next, he calculated the relationship between the stride length and the actual speed. But dinosaurs were huge. How could you compare them with horses any more than you could compare a horse with a dog? There she goes. Now, she's doing the fast canter. We've slowed her down a bit so that you can see better what's happening. And now we're going to get the dog moving too. We're going to slow the dog down so that the dog is taking the same number of strides each second as the, uh, as the horse. We've adjusted the time scale so that they're matching, but we haven't adjusted the scale of size yet. So what we're going to do now is we'll blow up the dog, make the dog the same size as the horse. And now they're moving in just the same sort of way. Imagine the dog with, uh, with a bit less hair on and with a rider on the back. And really the dog is moving uh, just like a horse. Alexander discovered that all animals move as scale models of one another. That is to say cats and camels, dogs and horses, look the same at the same speed. It even works for bipeds. Look at the hind legs of a horse. They have the same motion as a person running. By measuring the fossil bones, Alexander knows the leg length of a dinosaur. From the tracks, he can learn its stride length, and from that, he can calculate its speed. I looked round at the dinosaur tracks. I started off with uh, the really famous ones from Texas and worked out the speed of the big sauropod dinosaurs there. And oh dear, they were, they were slower than I am real slow human walking speed. But what about the sauropods' top speed? Speed takes power. That means the faster an animal runs, the stronger its legs have to be in relation to its bulk. By calculating the strength of dinosaur leg bones, Alexander was able to make some comparisons. An elephant can trot along at about 16 miles an hour. That was probably top speed for a patasaurus. A rhinoceros hits 20 miles an hour. Triceratops just might have been able to keep up. How fast could Tyrannosaurus move? Alexander thinks its bones were relatively weak. But there are no footprints with which to calculate its speed. He thinks it could have chased you at about 15 miles an hour. Others don't give you such good odds. They clock Tyrannosaurus at 20 miles an hour or more. Here in Arizona in the Painted Desert, the Alexander formula is about to be applied. 
Grad student Grace Irby and paleontologist Jim Farlow are looking for a set of dinosaur footprints. They ought to be around here somewhere. Because paleontologist R.T. Bird reported in the 1930s that he'd seen them. Bird never wrote down the exact location. He did leave one clue, though, a snapshot of himself on the site. Paleontologist Scott Madsden, a colleague of Farlow's and Irby's, found the photograph in an old book. He recognized the rock formations in the background. This looks like a good match. Yeah, I think you're right. Bird's secret was out. Scott Madsen came out here. He ran into the same problem we've got right here now. He thinks he's got the site all lined up with the landmarks, but no tracks. Can't find any tracks anywhere. He thinks he's made a mistake, but what happened is that between times, you have sand blowing in here, getting washed in. Sand completely covers up the site, so you've got to do a pretty thorough site cleanup to get all this stuff off before you can see any of the footprints. This is a very lovely dinosaur footprint site because you get a lot of footprints of both large and small three-toed, two-legged dinosaurs here. And I really like dinosaur footprints. I've worked on dinosaur skeletons. You can get a lot of information from them. But when you get right down to it, even the best dinosaur skeleton is a corpse. It's just some dead thing there. Whereas when you look down at those dinosaur trackways down there, you see where the animal goes one step after another. It's almost like a kind of time machine back into the days of the giant reptiles. These tracks belong to a theropod, a meat-eating dinosaur about the size of an ostrich. Farlow determines the animal's stride length. Okay, call that one. 313. 313. Okay, Jim. Okay. No, it so how's that compare with what we got before? Well, the first was 312, the second measurement 314, and then the last one was 313. Close That's enough for government good. work, yeah. Okay, take the hip height. Now the Alexander formula. Y to the X, 1.17, change of sign equals... 0.621 and we get the beast looks like he's just trotting along at around 11 miles per hour can you run that fast no farlow has found some more tracks these stretch him beyond his limits a 25 mile an hour dinosaur dash faster than the olympic sprint champion This in turn raises a new question. A hot-blooded animal, a lion for instance, keeps its body temperature constant and is active even on cold nights when the external temperature is low. It does this by a process scientists call endothermy. A cold-blooded animal, by contrast, will be cold and inert when the air around it is cold and active only when its internal temperature is raised by the warmth of the sun. When the cool night air returns, back the animal goes to its resting state. Scientists call this ectothermy. Today, most fast-moving agile animals use endothermy. They are hot-blooded. But dinosaurs are supposedly reptiles, and reptiles are cold-blooded. So were dinosaurs hot-blooded or cold-blooded? <laughs> 